Yeah, welcome back to KM6LYW Radio. This is a show about amateur radio with an emphasis on uh, data modes, uh, trying to maybe reimagine them in the internet information age. Hey, today we're going to talk about CW. I'll be straight up, I don't know CW, um, but we're, I'm going to make a CW contact and I'm going to show you how to do that right here this time on KM6LYW Radio. Yeah. Yeah, that's CW music right there. Actually, CW music me, but more like. <laughs> I don't know. That's actually more like Rush YYZ. So, welcome back. That's our bumper music. So, remember, extremely low production value here. So, CW, I'll be brutally honest. I don't know how CW works. I'm going to hear it, and, and I totally appreciate it. I totally appreciate the other people that understand it, and it can key it. Um, I've watched people do it and I just don't get it. Maybe I'm an old dog and I'm having trouble learning new tricks. Uh, but I can make CW contacts and that's kind of the emphasis of today's video is how do we make a CW contact uh, using nothing more than the DigiPi, which is something we talk about excessively on this channel. The DigiPi is this little uh, Raspberry Pi down here. It's a $15 computer and it will do every data or digital mode that you can think of. So PSK31, Packet, APRS, it's going to we're going to try and do CW with this. Um, it'll do every mode you can think of and it's all accessible via like your cell phone or your tablet or your Wi-Fi device. I'm going to use a computer web browser here and uh, we're going to see if we can operate CW using nothing more than the DigiPi here and an ICOM 7300 that we've got tuned to uh, the 40 meter band. You'll notice we're in the lower portion of that and we're going to see if we can find some CW signals. So let's get started. Um, I've got the DigiPi running here. It's in standby mode. I'm going to go ahead and click on FL Digi down here at the bottom. I'm going to click the on button right here. And that's going to fire up FL Digi on the DigiPi. And it's going to be running inside here. In fact, you can see it says uh, FL Digi. And it gives you a little URL to go to um, if it's not abundantly obvious. But we can click on FL Digi right here. And it's going to show us the FL Digi that's running inside the DigiPi. There it is. That's FL Digi. This is a totally cool app. Up here we've got our frequency. I um, mean, I can use the mouse scroll wheel to kind of change the uh, frequency on the radio. You know, it's changing over there as I click over here. Let me get the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. This is getting confusing. Anyways, I'm down on the CW portion. I'm scrolling through some frequencies. Um, and I'm looking for a CW signal. Um, down here at the bottom of FL Digi, you can see signals. So the things in red are uh, some sort of signal. And there's this little red box down here. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what we're the actual signal we're trying to decode. And a CW is a really narrow signal. Um, normally or historically, you know, you turn the transmitter on and off, literally. Um, and, you know, you, you produce a perfect sine wave. That's how narrow the signal is. And the more narrow the signal is, the further the propagation, you know, the less scatter. All of that power is concentrated into a single narrow signal. And that's really why CW is the original um, FT8. You know, it was the ultimate to, uh, low signal to noise ratio thing. You could put all of your power into a single narrow signal. It really, you know, theoretically it has no width. It's, it's a perfect frequency. Uh, but we're going to tune up on about 1500 hertz. Uh, this is going to be upper sideband digital over here. And I'm going to spin the dial and hopefully we're going to see something. Um, again, I'm not a CW expert. I, I'm sure my, my talking protocols are going to be weird. But I'm going to try and make a contact. Um, I'm going to spin the dial over here just to see what I can see. I Hey, and one thing you know I didn't mention, I'm dropping this in as well, is the operational mode. Um, it's, I'm assuming you guys all know it's CW. If, if you, With FL Digi, you click up here on Op Mode, and then you got all of your modes here, PSK, BSK31. In this case, the Op Mode is selected to CW. That's what we're using today. And down here, you will see the actual mode uh, listed CW and the symbols uh, per second down there. I'm looking for something good. Deep, 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 deep. You know, I'm actually, I'm, I'm visually doing this. Actually, I'm wondering if uh, 20 meters might be better. Here's a strong signal. I can turn the volume up. You guys can probably hear that. And I'm going to move the dial. I'm watching the uh, the bottom of the screen on FL Digi, and I'm going to move that right into 1500. And I'm going to turn that down. And not coincidentally, the radio is tuned to uh, between a megahertz, so it's 7.015 and a half. 
Um, and that's that's a CW signal right there. Um, so I'm going to back up a little bit. You can see it there happening. And I'm going to get that so you guys can see it. Um, so we're actually already decoding a CW signal. So there, this is a conversation happening right now. Now, FL Digi, from what I've gathered, isn't the best decoder. Um, you're really going to have to have some imagination when you see, you know, a lot of crud. Um, it really, really kind of depends up on... Depends on how fast they're going. In fact, in the bottom left corner of FL Digi, you can see they're at a rate of 24 symbols, 23 symbols per second. And FL Digi is always trying to track that. Now, if the other uh, computer is using modulated CW, and that is, uh, it's using you know, an audio tone and sending that out at 1500 hertz. Um, you know, a lot of times we can decode that because it's a real consistent speed. But if somebody's using a paddle, you know, human beings are going to drift speed a little bit, and it's kind of going to make FL Digi maybe not decode as well as it could. So you can actually see the decodings happening right now. Um, I'm going to try and, and, and interpret this. Uh, both of it, this is uh, something with both of us. <laughs> actually, the mouse is going. Both of us, I screwed up something so there, so to where we don't have any stairs. Um, something thanks. Do not, that probably won't help, but have to go there and look something. Um, you know, you know what makes this more difficult is that uh, there are, there's a lot of abbreviations in CW, you know, to say like BTU instead of back to you, and you know, RST means, you know, what, what your signal is. You know, you have to learn some of those abbreviations uh, in CW. This is a lot slower than a typical like PSK mode. You know, we have PSK 31, where the signal's a little wider, um, so computers can decode that a little better. But this is decoding CW, which is totally cool. In fact, on the radio, I can go over to the filter and go to filter three to really narrow down that audio. We're looking down here, you see all that noise is gone now. Um, you can lower the filter if you want, but try and keep your frequency right in that 1500 hertz mark um, and using upper sideband, and that should get you going on CW. So, I, you know, obviously I can't interrupt this guy's conversation. I'm um, still trying to figure out what he's, what he's putting, <laughs> uh, what he's typing. Maybe we can switch to another frequency, or maybe we can find another signal, and I could call CQ, and we can see what happens. So uh, that's just noise. Actually, we're seeing a lot of it is this arcade system back here. Man, this makes a ton of noise. Let's probably turn that guy off. This looks like a C, CW signal. I don't know. It could be... Uh, let me open the filter so you guys can see it a little better. We're looking for red stuff at the bottom of the screen. So I opened the filter all the way, so we're seeing 3,000 hertz worth of data there. Nah, that's a, that's a Winlink guy over there, I bet. And that's someone tuning up their radio. It's, we're just looking for those spikes over here. We're just looking for spikes... On the display, there's a spike, but it's continuous. So that's just a spur. That guy's really ever loud. Is this where I was before? I can get down and take him to half a megahertz there. And we're right on 1500. I don't know if that's the same guy as we saw before. See, it's, it's hunting for the speed right now, and it's kind of guessing at it. That's why it's gibberish. So it's going to be between 20, 21. Um, you know, if you give it like a full 30 seconds, sometimes it'll lock into the speed and pace. Um, I don't know if we're going to get anything out of this guy, but let's do a transmission. I'm just going to call CQ and I'm going to do it at uh, 70. I'm going to do it on half a megahertz. Oh, let's go up here. There's some noise right there. Let's do 7033 and a half. And I can set my power level to about 40 watts. Eh, it looks like there's a faint signal there. I'm going to come up a little bit. Yeah, there was a signal there. Let me slide right back into uh, 7035 and a half. I don't see anyone there. Now to call CQ using CW, there's a button right over here that literally says CQ. So I'm going to press this and we are going to see what happens. Hopefully I got the, the audio levels right. So here we go. We are off. We are sending CQ. I got my monitor on so you can hear it. And the ALC looks good. I'm looking down here for uh, you know ALC not being maxed out. There's a little bit of ALC. I can see there's a lot of current. I'm at about, uh, I don't know, 12 amps when this is on. So when you're doing a CQ signal, I mean, you are really pumping out the current. It's a, you know, a perfect carrier, especially if you're just bumping into the ALC a little bit. So we're just going to sit here for a second and see if someone responds to our CQ. I don't know if that's 
that's going to happen or not. Um, I did a couple of dry runs before this and I actually had a, a couple of conversations. <laughs> I, could, I might be able to pull those up. They're a little sketchy. It was a Parks on the Air, actually made the contact, got the RST reports, and that worked. All right, so that was the CQ. And I don't know, I'm going to pause you guys just for a second. Um, you know, if someone comes on, I'll bring it back. Otherwise, I might we might go searching, uh, search for another someone calling CQ. All right, I wasn't really happy with the uh, <laughs> the contacts I was getting. I've got a new guy here. I just answered his CQ. We can see we've got KM something LYW. And I'm going to say uh, he's going to give me my RST here. F5NN <laughs> is my signal. And so it says something M6LYW day NZ7Q. So I'm going to say NZ7Q5 California. And then I'm just going to hit transmit down here. And we're going to see what happens. I've really had some trouble getting these to, to sync up. Um, I don't know. I read a bunch of manuals. Some, some people say if you press clear down here, it'll reset the decoder. Uh, but I actually <laughs> can read this guy a little bit. All right, then he says KM6LYW. It looks like it's synced now at about 20 characters per second from NZ7Q. GMTN. Oh, it's good morning. Thanks. Um, you know, you really got to be able to decode this. It says nice 599 uh, in, in, in New Mexico. Okay, he's in New Mexico. I'm in California. This is actually working now. <laughs> this, was, this was brutal even to get this far. You know, there are some external decoders you can uh, use with this. I don't know. Um, I haven't investigated it. Um, he says, uh, I'm going to say thanks. There's someone else on this signal, too, on this frequency. I can just barely see him. For QSO, I am using FL Digi. Name is Craig. QTH Cool. California, and then I'm just going to control R here, so it'll stop transmitting. This might be too complex for, I don't know, CW. I really don't know the etiquette here, guys, so uh, please don't yell at me. Please be gentle. <laughs> I just don't know CW. All right, there's a signal again. All right, FLDG thinks he's at about 20 words per minute, and it says something, Craig, thanks, um, I'm not, his operator, his name is Paul. So TNX is thanks. OP is operator. Uh, he said his name twice. And then, um, I'm not sure what he's typing now. <laughs> but we got his name. We got a signal report. That's technically a contact. Um, and now he's saying something op from... <laughs> tailgate of, I guess he's going to say truck. What is he going to say? Of pickup truck. I'm just going to say nice <laughs> truck. And then he says uh, KM6LYW from NZ7 QT. Uh, I, th I think the TU is just noise. And we got someone else calling CQ right on top of our conversation. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to blast over this guy. Hopefully he can't hear the guy that's just now jamming our signal. You know, if I can hear it, usually my, you know, the other guy can't, right? And vice versa, if someone, if there was a third party using your frequency, I, I guess it just, 
means you need to listen before you transmit, right? So let's see if this works. Nice from truck at home, avoiding work today. <laughs> this is working better than a lot of my other contacts. A lot of them were just gibberish. Um, you know, I did turn my gain control. I messed with that a little bit, so I have uh, automatic gain control. Actually, I need to stop this transmission. Yeah, I guess the control R didn't uh, stop it. That was interesting. This is really cool. <laughs> Let's see if this is our guy or if this is our jammer. He's weak. I bet you that's the guy. Yeah, he's still calling CQ. So someone else is calling CQ right over our conversation here. He's a, This is CQ Parks on the Air. And he is didn't get his whole call sign. P-O-T-A-T-A -T -A is usually Parks on the Air. And uh, N7... Z yeah, N said... <laughs> November Z7Q. It looks like he's trying to respond to him. He probably picked up his call sign. So this is going off the rails quickly. Um, I think uh, the Parks on the Air guy is trying to reply to the guy that I'm talking to. He's giving him a good signal report, though, so that's good to know. So, <laughs> Anyways, there was a contact. It was dodgy. Technically, we exchanged more than a couple of pieces of, of information and call signs. So that was November Z7 Quebec, and he gave me a 599. He's in New Mexico uh, transmitting from his pickup truck. So <laughs> I'm going to call this a contact. It was weird. But I'll be honest, this is one of the better ones. So I just dropped in this this little segment here. So uh, uh, going back to the to your regularly scheduled program, this was uh, this was a cool contact. Let me know what you use to use to do CW. I'm going to turn this down since uh, actually I, I'm going to do another call while we're while we're fading out. This will be like our playoff music. <laughs> I'll just keep calling CQ. So let me know what you use. There's other software that can decode CW. Some probably better than others. Um, you know, you, you let me know what you use. I am brand new to this. Uh, I really don't know how CW works. I totally respect people who, who can do this, who can just get this off the top of their head. Um, but this is the best we have right now. And we do have a CW contact uh, in, in the bag here, uh, at least like maybe one and a half. So uh, you guys let me know how this works. So the last thing we got to do here before we bail is uh, thank our patrons. This is you guys. I'm going to start another... Start another CQ. <laughs> Playing off. This is our CQ music. I got to thank you guys. Look at this. Uh, Patreon.com slash KM6LYW Radio. Really got to thank the supporters of the channel. I think we're like at 250. I, I don't know. There's just so many. There's too many to display here. So we got Foo, Brian, Jake, Jason, Michael, Christopher, Steve, William, Simon, Ian, Jim, Brad, Douglas, Don, Carlton, Tony. Uh, thank you guys. So Buddy Brown, Claude, Aaron. I, I'm just going to flip through these really quick. Uh, Actually, I'm listening for a response. I don't hear one. I don't know. I'm at about 40 watts. Is that about right? Let me know what the what the power should be on this. This is just a fan dipole in the backyard uh, on 20 meters. Okay, Robert, Andrew, Henry, <laughs> Theodore, Bradley, Hans. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys are making this channel possible. Please like and subscribe. We're well over 1,000 subscribers now. Uh, completely exceeding my expectations for the channel. Uh, PD1PME. Um, hey, I actually got your... Uh, your uh, your uh, Digipi ICOM 705 base printed here. In fact, I probably need to paint it black. Black and Walt, thank you for uh, for printing this for me. It's totally cool. Uh, Larry James, Andre, uh, BB Ryan, Slimy Green, uh, Jim Clayton, Seabrand. I'm probably saying that 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 incorrectly. And Kiddo. Um, then these are the new guys down here that, that just now joining us. Uh, we got David, Jared, uh, David, if I'm saying that right, Eric, Kyle, Bob, and Chris Hurd. Hey, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. So this has been another KM6 LYW radio production. A um, little sketchy on CW. You know, I, I think we're going to like maybe do like a weekly mode, a mode of the week. So get out there and try different modes. Uh, let me know what modes are working, what people are operating on. Uh, we just did CW, more or less, and uh, we did that with FL Digi uh, using the DigiPi. Of course, you want to know more about the Digi DigiPi, it's Krager.org slash DigiPi, and that's this little Raspberry Pi right here that we've been using all along. Uh, every data mode you can think of, and totally accessible with nothing more than your cell phone or tablet or, or web browser, which is what we've been using here today. All right. Hey, thanks for helping me out with CW today. This is KM6LYW Craig in California, and uh, I'm clear.